Hello, it's me here once again, and I am back with another one of my Uriah Heap discography reviews. But before we get into it, be sure to like, comment, favorite, subscribe. Uh, click the little bell so you don't miss a video. I'll also put my Twitter down below so you can follow me there. So if you want, you can suggest album reviews or any album really you want me to review or any topic in music you'd like me to talk about. But anyway, let's get on to it. The album we are looking at today is Innocent Victim, released... Uh, November 1977, coming off the heels of the first uh, John Lawton album, which I think everyone would consider it very much a success. It was better than its previous album, and it was the first to feature Lucifer Friends' John Lawton on vocals, and also the first to feature uh, Uriah Heat mainstay for pretty much the rest of his life, Trevor Boulder. Now... Looking at this album before we get into it, this is going to be the last album on Warner Brothers Records, I believe. I'm not sure about that. I believe it is, because I think the next one's on another label. But looking at this album going into it, I wasn't necessarily really looking forward to it. I haven't listened to this album in quite a while, so a lot of this was pretty new to me or felt fresher on some of the other stuff. But anyway, let's get into the album. Starts off with Keith Bon Ryden. I like the intro, has a nice bass line, clean guitar. I always love John Lawton's vocals. There's one thing, I will never diss David Byron's or John Lawton's vocals because they are fantastic on a lot of stuff. Uh, nice acoustic and organ together, catchy chorus. I like the tempo changes. Not a fan of something that happened a lot over the last few albums is the very much the repeating the end of the song over and over and over again. It's just something that it gets very repetitive very quickly and it turns people off. On to song number two, Flying High. I like the guitar intro. It has a show tune feel to it. I like the bass lines, catchy chorus. Love Lee Kerslake's drum fills. Uh, ending repeating until fade again once again does the damn thing again. On to song number three, a nice guitar and bass intro, twin guitar sound, has an early rock sound to it, love Lawton's vocals, nice blues rock, that's something John Lawton does very well is blues rock, love the bass, uh, love the background guitar, foot tapping, finally a Mick Box solo on this album, twin guitar attacks, nice vocal harmonies, and that's all I gotta say about that. On to song number four, Free and Easy. Very fast paced, has like what feels like a new wave of British heavy metal like riff. If only they'd been doing this since Sweet Freedom, it would really have worked on a lot of albums. Love the vocals, love the metal feel to it. Love the battling guitars, and I like the big ending to it. On to song number five, Illusion. I didn't care so much for the intro, but I do like the vocals and the underneath guitar. I like the keyboards. I like the nice vocal harmonies. I love the emotional guitar solo by Mick Box on this. And a nice tempo change at the end just as it fades out. On to song number six, Free Me. A soft acoustic old song. It became a huge hit for the band in Germany especially. It was probably their biggest hit they had since Lady in Black in Germany. And also a few other countries. South Africa was huge. Uh, New Zealand and Australia really liked it. It's a very good song. Uh, I like the vocals to it. I love Kurz Lake's drumming on it, and it's very catchy. On to song number seven, Cheat and Lie. I like the intro. I like the bass and clean guitar underneath. I like how the song picks up. It's, a, once again, a very catchy chorus. Nice guitar solo, and I also really like Trevor Boulder's booming bass on this. On to song number eight, The Dance. I like the intro. I love the vocals and lyrics. I love the guitars. The tambourine on it was actually a very nice touch. I love the bass lines, and I like the organ and guitar. On to song number nine, the final song of the album is Choices. I like how the intro fades in. Very guitar-driven. Love the solo to start. Uh, like the drums. Vocals from Lawton on this entire album were absolutely spot on, if not just for those first two songs. Uh, love the interlude and twin guitars, and I just love 
Trevor Boulder's base. That's something about Uriah Heap that never really gets mentioned. You always hear Gary Thane mentioned, but Trevor Boulder was one hell of a base player and that big booming base. I think he's one of the more underrated members of Uriah Heap, at least in my opinion, through this era. Now, let's get into this album. Is that actually first couple songs were kind of eh? That if that's what people heard the first two songs, I could see a lot of people turning it off. But it's one of those albums that just got really good. I think it was mixed wrong. Like, whoever decided to put those two songs in the first bit, I would have actually started the album maybe with Free and Easy. Because it's booming, it's different. It's something way different from your eye heap. You maybe got a new audience, or you might have got back some of that audience you lost. Uh... You could have even put Free Me, I guess, in that. Not really. I like Roller. That would have been a good one. Uh, Cheat and Lie would have been a good one to go there. But I think if you really want to look at it, those two first songs should have been buried somewhere in the middle of the album. Really should have. And oh yeah, I forgot to also mention this was also produced by Jerry Braun and Ken Hensley. So I think the days, I believe, of Jerry Braun just doing it solely are gone. Which I kind of, I wish Uriah Heap would have fired him. I really do. I wish he would have stayed gone, really. But looking at this, what are the best songs on the album, or best song on the album for me is Free and Easy. Being somewhat of a metalhead, I do like that song. It very catchy, it very perks you up, and it's very different. It's something you really have not heard too much of since Sweet Freedom, if not earlier. You maybe even look at yourself since you heard something maybe that fast, that heavy from your eye heap. Hidden gems on the album for me are songs like Illusion, Cheat and Lie. I'll even throw in Free Me a little bit. I, I do like that song. I think it is. The worst one is Keep on Riding or Flying High. The first two songs on the album were just brutal. Like I don't I can't stress enough how much I don't like those songs. Because they were it would be different, I think, if it was in the middle of the album, but to start the album off with those two, I had virtually nothing written down compared to every other song. But anyway, let's get into it. Uh, anything really... To me, it was actually a pleasant surprise look, listening to this album, very much so around this time. I went from thinking, oh my god, this is going to be another uh, High and Mighty or another... Uh, Firefly or something like that, but I was actually pleasantly surprised listening to it again. Actually, how much I actually, for the first time, probably since Sweet Freedom, had a pretty good foot tapping, just head nodding, listening to it, feel to it. I absolutely loved it. Uh, if I had to give it a rating out of five, this album, it, it was really hard, really, to come up with a rating for this because. I wanted to give it three and a half, but I think it is better than Return to Fantasy. I do think it's better than Firefly. I'll give it a four out of five. This, to me, is a fantastic record. If not for those first two songs, this could have been one of Uriah Heap's better records. Too bad it didn't sell very well. Most of that's band blamed, which is 100% I understand. But going back, listening to it, fantastic record, 4 to 5, buy it. But this is me here once again. Peace.